Is it seasonal affective disorder I suffer from? The special lamp I bought doesn't help at all. But I do light up whenever the sun itself appears. You say, the blossoms are most themselves on a cloudy day, as if contrast is what flowers are about. But I fell swollen, with useless tears, as the clouds must be with rain, projecting their shadows over fields that are simply waiting to blaze back to green. The world is always going to pieces, and we're all growing rapidly towards our deaths, even the children. But just one hit of the sun, an almost lethal shot of pure, yellow light, like the hand of some saint I don't even believe in touching my face, and I'll forget the whole broken world, forget the impermanence of beauty. I'll simply catch fire in a single spoke of the sun. The pain we feel reading, the mere words in a book cling to us like static on a cold day. The road a woman walks in the last chapter twists away from her happiness. And the pain follows wherever we go, haunting us with its mute footsteps, the ghost of pain we have known, and of pain to come. Small explosions of grief in a sonic sequence, another fracture of innocence. These are the templates into which our lives must fit themselves, moving shadows the sun makes, rising and going down on every page as evening settles into all unswept corners of the world. But how about the sound of trains? Those drawn out whistles of longing in the night, like coyotes made of steam and steel, no color at all, reminding me of prisoners on chain gangs I've only seen in movies, defeating men hammering spikes into rails, the burly guards watching over them. Those whistles give loneliness and departure of voice. It is the kind of loneliness I can take in my arms, tasting of tears that comfort even as they burn, dampening the pillows and all the feathers of all the geese who were plucked to fill them. Perhaps I embrace the music of departure, song without lyrics, so I can learn to love it, though I don't love it now, for at the end of the story, when sky and clouds and grass, and even you, my love, of so many years, have almost disappeared, it'll be all there is left to love. To speak in tongues is simply to follow desire. Out the door of the mouth and into the open air. That place where language is seldom understood. They will bring doctors and interpreters who will shake their hands before they move on. Soon, even words will fade, as stars must do at noon. There are no choices here. What are they hiding? These fleshy layers, smooth as the skins of an onion, and in their own way, equally pungent. Here, in a simple vase, in a simple room, evening enters, and all other color fades until only rose glows, red as the tip of a cigarette, a fist of petals, each as separate as any other mortal keeper of secrets. <laughs>